Hello everyone, this is my first lecture with you. My name is Yasser Abdul Kadam Yasser, and this lecture is titled Orthodontic Indices. What is an index and why we use it? First of all, we can define the index as a tool that used to provide a numerical value describing the status of a case on a graded scale. That means this index is used to change the case into a number. And this number can be used to classify the case according to a specific scale. In orthontics, indices are essential component and used for assessing diagnosis or assessing the treatment need, severity and complexity of the case, and the outcome. There are general requirements of an index. Each index should be valid, which means it can measure what it was designed to measure reliable that means it's reproducible or it gives the same result when recorded on different occasions and by different examiners also it should be acceptable to the profession and public and it should be simple and cheap these are the general requirements of each index. In orthodontics, we use different indices for different purposes. And in this lecture, we will go through some of these. Some of these orthodontic indices used for diagnosis or for assessing treatment complexity or assessing treatment need or treatment outcome or they are multi-purpose orthodontic indices for the diagnostic indices we will go through angle classification canine classification incisor classification and skeletal classification for treatment complexity indices, we will go through Little's Irregularity Index and Discrepancy Index. Index of Orthodontic Treatment Need is an example of treatment need indices. And for the treatment outcome indices, we have two main indices. These are the Peer Assessment Rating Index and the Cast Radiography Valuation. And the index of complexity outcome and need icon, this is an example of multipurpose orthodontic indices. Diagnostic indices. The four classifications that used as diagnostic indices, you already took them in different lectures. That's why I will go through these quickly. First of all, we have Angle's classification, which was described by Edward Angle in 1899, and it's based on the relative anterior posterior position of the first permanent molars. In class one, the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first permanent molar should occlude to the buccal groove of the lower first permanent molar. If the mesiobuccal cusp is more anterior to the buccal groove of lower first permanent molar, this is class 2 angles classification. And if the mesiobuccal cusp of first permanent molar, the upper first permanent molar, is more posterior to the buccal groove of the lower first permanent molar, 
This is described as class 3 angles classification. If we don't have first permanent molar, we cannot describe angles classification. Canine classification based upon anteroposterior position of the canines. In class 1, the upper canine includes in the embrasure between the lower canine and the lower first premolar. If this relation of the upper canine is more anterior to the class 1 relation, this is called class 2 canine relationship. If the upper canine is more posterior to the class 1 relation between the lower canine and the lower first premolar, this is class 3 canine relationship. Incisor classification. The British Standards Institute classify the incisor based upon anterior posterior position of incisors. In class 1, the lower incisor edge should include with the single and plateau of the upper incisors. This is class 1 incisor relationship. If the lower incisor edge occludes behind the single and plateau of the upper incisor, this is class 2, division 1, especially if it is associated with increase in the overjet. If the lower incisor edge occludes behind the single and plateau and there is a retroclination of upper incisors, this is called class 2, division 2. And if the lower incisor edge occludes anterior to the single and plateau, this is class 3 incisor relationship. So it depends on the position of the lower incisor edge with the single and plateau. The difference between class 2 division 1 and class 2 division 2 is the amount of overjet and the inclination of upper incisor. In class 2 division 1, we have proclined upper incisors with increase in the overjet and in class 2 division 2 we have retroclined upper incisors and normal or decrease or sometimes even increase in the overjet. Skeletal classification usually assessed by lateral cephalometric radiographs. We used the angle, which is called AMB, to describe the case and it de describe the anterior posterior position of the maxilla to the mandible in class 1, class 2, and class 3. The difference is that this angle in class 1 is between 2 to 4 degrees. In class 2, it will be greater than 4 degrees. In class 3, it will be less than 2 degrees. In case of class 2 skeletal classification or relationship, when this angle is increased, this could be due to more anterior position of the maxilla or more posterior position of the mandible or a combination of both. In class 3, when we have decrease in the AMB angle, this could be due to more posterior position of the maxilla or more anterior position of the mandible or a combination of both. So this angle is used to describe the skeletal classification, the A and B angle. Now we finish diagnostic indices and we will come to the treatment complexity indices.
we have two main indices these are the Littles Irregularity Index which is a British index and the Discrepancy Index which is an American index Littles Irregularity Index this index is a simple index that used to assess the regularity of the lower labial segment, usually, in order to establish the severity of malocclusion and the priority of treatment. It usually measured from the medial side of the lower canine to the medial side of the lower left canine. The displacement between each two adjacent contact points in this region is measured by a vernier and then the total of these displacement is representing the score of Little's Irregularity Index. For example, if we have a score of 5, that means we have a 5 mm of displacement in this region. This displacement between any of these contact points. As you can see here, that we will use a vernier to measure the displacement between each two adjacent contact point from the medial of the canine to the distal of the lateral, from the medial of the lateral to the distal of the central, from the medial of the central to the medial of central, and so on. And these amount of displacement will be summed to get the final score of the Littles Irregularity Index. So it's very simple and easy to be applied clinically or on a study model. On the other hand, the Discrepancy Index is used to evaluate the difficulty of the cases presented to the American Board of Orthodontic Examination. It evaluates criteria from dental models and cephalometric radiographs. So unlike the Littles Irregularity Index, we not only have the study models, we should also have cephalometric radiograph. These criteria that used for this index are overjet, overbite, open bite, occlusion, lingual, and buccal posterior crossbite and cephalometric variables. So it's more complicated when compared to the Littles Irregularity Index, but at the same time, it seems to be more precise in describing the difficulty of the case.